You're listening to the Thomas Talks Podcast. Welcome to Thomas Talks, where we talk about anything and everything school buses. I'm your host, Tom Zelke from Daimler Trucks North America. Joining me in the studio today is Kaylee Edgerly, President and CEO of Thomas Built Buses, and Tom Schaaf, Vice President and General Manager of Thomas Built's North Carolina dealership, Carolina Thomas. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank Thank you, you. Tom. All right. On today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the difference between gasoline and diesel engines and some pros and cons for you guys to consider. Of course, you guys meaning the audience. Thomas Built Buses offers a gasoline type in their type A buses, Kaylee, but they don't offer it in their C. Why not in the C type bus? Well, there's there's a history there with, with type A. The market has evolved. It's more of an automotive base and it's the gasoline is accepted there in big volume GM or Ford chassis where there's only a gasoline option because that's kind of what the automotive market has dictated and we catch to the rear end of that, so to speak. Mm -hmm. On the gasoline, on the Type C, it's 100% our decision. And uh, it's been tough over the last few years, but we believe that uh, there's a bridge and there's a bridge and powertrain from diesel. You can listen to other podcasts and hear what we have to say about diesel, that Mm -hmm. today it's a fuel of choice in most instances, and that the bridge to an electric vehicle, which we're investing heavily in right now, to EVs, which is really starting to take off, that bridge engine is what we have right now, and it's our new diesel engine. It's a a Cummins engine, and and more importantly, it's a DD5 or DD8 Mm -hmm. that was recently designed and, and wipes out a lot of the past perils and bad perceptions of, of old diesel, it's new diesel, and it's our bridge to EV. And we don't think gasoline is, is that bridge due to emissions, due to fuel costs, due to volatility of the fuel in the school bus industry. So I think uh, I'd add one point. When you're uh, somewhere and you see a vehicle doing work um, and they're pulling in and they're delivering fuel, they're, it, it, the the chassis that's transporting the fuel is almost always a clean diesel. Mm -hmm. Um, They're not using the fuel they're hauling sometimes if it's gasoline or some other type of fuel. If you're going to do real work and and, and, and provide the lowest bottom line, you're going to use a clean diesel. It's ironic. It is, isn't it? Well, there are some people in the industry that are saying that gasoline engines are, and let me read this list, it's pretty detailed, easier to maintain, provide lower costs up front, lower maintenance costs, are easier to source technicians for, are cleaner, and have better cold start. So why aren't gasoline engines the best choice for school bus markets today? They sound pretty good on the on the actual gas side. I'm going to say just a couple statements, toss it to you, get your thoughts. Um, those are short-term perspectives. Longer view those things don't hold up over years and years and years. And the school bus is part of the community for years and years. So there's some validity. Some are short-term, some are long-term, but those are mostly short-term statements. And uh, diesel holds up, in my opinion. And, the, and we'll talk about some facts about behind my opinion. But I think that's a, that's a short-term list. Uh, we're taking the longer view, and I'll get your thoughts, Tom. Yeah, I, I mean, if you when you look at what, like, uh, lower-cost uh, – to maintain. Um, I just don't think it's, it's, uh, factual. Um, you don't have, you, you have to, you have to figure in everything. So, okay. So a gasoline engine has a smaller reservoir full oil, um, than, than a diesel. Okay. So it'll be less for that amount, but the, the maintenance intervals on like the DD five, uh, you, you know, you're, you're going to change oil one time a year. Yeah. It's a year. So once a year, so it, you have to be extremely careful when you're calculating um, what's lowest cost of ownership, in my in my opinion. So I think it is short term, most of it. When I talk to districts, and you and I both get to talk to a lot of specific districts, they, they provide this list, and, and then these are kind of factoids. When you, when you start talking to them kind of on a personal, emotional basis, um, a lot of the reasons why they're putting this list forward is because they have a very bad memory of diesel. That, that there's been a singular event or a buying cycle that happened five years ago that just tore them up. And, and I get it. You know, if I, if I 
went to the same fast food place all the time and, and I got sick and my wife got sick and my kids got sick <laughs> yeah. from going to this fast food place, I might, maybe I should, quit eating fast food. Yeah. But a lot of our customers have had that same thing happen. Of They're holding on to things from five or six years ago with some older technology and this is what they're saying, but in their heart, they're burning up from those other things from five or six years ago um, versus giving today's technology a chance. And, and those things are real. We should empathize with those customers mm -hmm. and then do our best to educate them. Today's product's different than what was in the market five or six, seven or eight, nine or 10 years ago. Yeah, and I, I just, I don't agree with the easier to maintain um, I, I beg, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a gearhead. I know yep. you started in a body shop. Yep. So, you know, you and I have car conversations and engine conversations quite frequently, but uh, most of us don't work on our automobiles in their, in their gasoline. Most of, I mean, you just don't because no. they're, so to say they're easier to maintain than, than our bus with a clean diesel. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm having a hard time, uh, Chewing yeah. on that. The, everything's more complex. It everything's is. Everything's far more complex. Yeah. Anything we, we've told the story before about the room in an engine compartment from a vehicle from the 70s and 80s is vastly different. One of the reasons maybe in your car you don't want to touch the gasoline engine is you can't see it. Yeah. Right? It's buried yeah. beneath all those wires. And diesel is too, right? Let's be frank. that that It's more complex. It burns hotter. Everything is evolved, and to say one is, is easier than another is not a fair statement. I think it's, it's got a bad history. So you're basically saying diesel is the best fuel type for today's fleets and well into the future. Why do you say that? I bet the people listening to me right now are saying that because we don't offer a gasoline. They're going to say, that's why you're saying it, because you don't offer a gasoline. And uh, touche, we don't. Um, there's... There's two main reasons, and they're black and white. Most gasoline applications that we see, customers that, that drive gasoline and will share with us information are saying they're getting anywhere from three to four and a half miles per gallon with gasoline. Yeah. And we have an offering now in the DD5 and the DD8 that can pull nine, 10, sometimes 11. If you start doing the math, they're like, well, that gasoline engine that vehicle may be three, four thousand dollars less at sticker price when your dealership selling it to them. Yeah. If I offered a gas, by the way, I don't. Yeah. But you eat that up in one year. Mm -hmm. You in fuel, fuel savings. Costs. Yeah, in right. fuel costs, you eat it up in one year. Yeah, Kaylee, and that's just the fuel. Yeah. Okay. So a vehicle that's burning, it's using two times as much volume of fuel. Okay. Well, how does the fuel get in there? It doesn't happen on its own. So part of this lowest cost of maintenance and things like that, somebody has to fuel the vehicle. So now you're fueling it twice as often, things like that. All those things have to be considered really carefully, I think. All right, so let's keep talking about that carbon dioxide because it really does matter. We do calculations on a gasoline school bus that's getting on average 4.5 miles per gallon. It's going to burn and produce, it's going to burn fuel and produce a certain amount of carbon dioxide. That's the bad stuff for the atmosphere that plays into global warming. So uh, a gasoline school bus getting at 4.5 is going to produce 650,000 pounds of carbon dioxide over its life. It's a lot. A diesel is going to produce carbon dioxide as well, but a diesel, especially if you get a DD5 and you can get nine miles per gallon, and you can, we've seen that consistently, you're burning far less fuel and you're not creating the same amount of carbon dioxide. In, in fact, getting nine miles per gallon, you're producing around 380,000 pounds compared to 650 with a gasoline. That's a lot less carbon dioxide, 75% less than a gasoline school bus. So it means something for our yeah, grandkids. It's impressive. Yeah, and that's just one, uh, one emission, carbon dioxide. Um, if you truly look at what's going to look at carbon monoxide, Right now, it's not as tightly regulated as, say, nitrous oxide because they're, they're, they're to a point where they can't do a whole lot about it. So uh, a gasoline vehicle will produce 100 times more than the Detroit DD5 carbon monoxide, but people won't, they're not talking about that right now. So I think, I just think you need to look at everything. I bet we're sounding really anti-gasoline right now. <laughs> I, and and that, that's not, not the point. It's just... The diesel story has not been told. 
and, and the comparison hasn't been told. So as we try to get our facts and figures mm -hmm. out, it sounds anti-gasoline. I understand why certain customers go that way. We just want to show the other side of that coin. And there's it, really compelling economics mm -hmm. from fuel and really important environmental impacts in the future. Yeah. Yeah. How do you overcome the, the low bid of gasoline at uh, some of these manip municipalities? How do you overcome that with capital investments? Do you talk about the future and talk about not filling up so much you know, with diesel and diesel engines lasting longer? How do you overcome that? And how do you educate people around that? I mean, so you, you have to do it with facts and figures. Um, you have to be extremely careful that you're fair on both sides. Like you said, we're not beating up on gasoline, but we think the clean diesel is a better answer. So, um, you know, somebody has to fuel these vehicles. I think if you just go into uh, a municipality and they're complaining about uh, regen and they just going to switch to gasoline uh, and you don't as you're you're the supplier and you don't help them look at everything. You know, who's going to fuel the vehicle? Do you have somebody to do that? Those sorts of things. I think you're doing a, a, a huge disservice. Some customers, um, which are burned, yeah. Not, not, yeah, not literally, but but emotionally from a bad pass with diesel, will say also, hey, my replacement engine is going to be significantly less. On a school bus, you shouldn't have to replace the engine. And, and there are very few instances of that, of the Cummins. Good engine. There, there are a few on some dirty roads we've experienced over the past, yeah. right? That yeah. It may not necessarily be a common thing, a group thing, but you're not going to have to replace an engine on a, on a school bus. It's far durable. The DD5, again, has that life of 400,000 plus miles on a school bus. You're not going to be putting those miles mm -hmm. on. So you, if you've got that solid diesel engine, it's not even an argument on a replacement cost standpoint. And then people think to replace a gasoline in a, in a bus might be four to five thousand dollars for a crate engine but by the time you get it all dressed out and you take the time you're bumping right up to the the cost and a five digit cost that you are with a diesel yeah. engine as well yeah and who wants to take an engine completely out of a vehicle in today you know with today's technology and and put it back in and everything be like it was before you did it it's uh that's a tough task yeah. and with garages with fewer and fewer technicians and things like that um, I don't think that's planning for the future. No. Um, you got to have durable, you got to have economical, and yeah. you have to have environmental. It's a mix of everything. Yeah. So, and that's basically to circle back to your question: that mix of everything, those three, uh, those three factors that Kay uh, Kaylee just mentioned. I think you need to look at them all and help people because you know your average. I mean, they, unless you talk to them, they don't know. Um, so it's easy to just well, gasoline will solve all my problems and away I go until it doesn't, yep. right? And that leads so. me to the next question, Tom. You've got uh, customers that have been burned or upset about after treatment issues mm -hmm. over the years. Don't they automatically fall back and think that gasoline is the perfect solution for them? And how do you overcome that? Um, that can be, uh, that can be a, a, you know, a knee jerk reaction. So, and I think we just refer back to what we've talked about. You talk about the fuel economy and, um, you know, you can, uh, if, if you were going to replace the engine at 150,000 miles or that's, that's your reason for buying gasoline, then you, you look at that, um, factor that cost in. And yeah, I mean, you can, you can fax and figure this and, uh, and, and, and show in my opinion that the clean diesel is, is the best for our environment today. Yeah. It, it's, it's a tough line and yeah, it uh, is. you have to be empathetic. Um, if you're, uh, a transportation director, a foreman in a garage, and you had issues over the past, and it's it's caused you to work late. Uh, it's it's caused you to leave kids on the side of the road, and we come in and say we have newer technology. That's not going to happen. Yeah, you get some eyes rolling. Yeah, right? you do. And, yeah. and customers are listening to us and with our new engine and saying, "Well, come see me in a in a year or two." And that was a year or two ago now. So we're knocking on their doors again to say that our solution, our DD5, our DDA, and even Cummins improvements that have been made are, are better. Um, but you just can't totally discount no, all the issues can't. they've had in the past or you've right. got no credibility. So yeah. we recognize those. And with integrity, we try to get people to understand the facts of figures of simple economics on fuel prices. Mm -hmm. 
and environmental impacts for the future. It is a mm -hmm. clear direction where diesel is the should be the choice right now. And if you're looking at anything, watch us. Watch us develop the EV and see those costs go down where you then have a totally, totally emission-free vehicle. So. Well, Kaylee and Tom, we're about ready to wrap up, but I want to leave with this question and we'll wrap on your closing comments around it. Why should districts stick with diesel engines? And Tom, I'll start with you. Oh, boy. Well, to, to me, the first one is Kaylee mentioned our grandchildren and, and the people that we're going to leave our world to. And, and if you look at all the emissions from start to finish, the clean diesel is doing the best job today of anything that's, that we have to use mm -hmm. to transport children to and from school. So that would be my, uh, my, my first one. So, Yep, the, the environmental impacts are, are there. That pr should probably be, and I'm trying to change my mindset as I get older, that should be the number one reason. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate you leading off. It. Everything's not about dollars and, and cents. Um, but dollars and cents does come into yes. it. And mm -hmm. if you got the opportunity as a school district to make a decision which could save you over the course of running the vehicle thirty to forty thousand dollars of fuel savings with a commitment from someone like me that technology has evolved and the issues that kept you away from having dinner at home with your wife on time are now alleviated because technology has advanced. Take the money and run and trust that we have a better product out there. So the, the economics add up as well. And then uh, the, the third and probably least, diesel is proven. It's, it's durable. It's been mm -hmm. in the bus application and it's gotten better and better every year. And it's, a, it's an engine which is built for the stop go. It handles the idle situations mm -hmm. pretty well, especially with some of the new technology and lasts for over 400,000 miles. Gasoline, we'll see. You know, when they have a good one, like, you know, a good diesel engine, you've got the parts and the tools and mm -hmm. your, 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 you know, your infrastructure is all set up for that so at injecting something else into it just adds complication i think so agreed yeah well gentlemen i want to thank you for your time today we appreciate you being here and we look forward to the next thomas talks podcast all right thanks Tom. thank you